Here's the grading results by a gender for a 11th grade intermediate algebra test for an entire school. So the first question is they want to know how many males took the test. And that's kind of e easy, just going to add them all up. Looks like 323 to me. Second question is what percent of the female students earned a C on the test? Well, how many female students were there total? That's your denominator. And how many got a C? Looks like that. So that is your percentage there. 76 out of 326 comes out to 23.3%. Next question. What percent of all students earned less than a C on the test? So let's figure out who earned less than a C. There's that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. So that's going to be your numerator, and then the total number of students is going to be the 323 plus the 326. So this is the answer, roughly 63.2 percent. All right, the next question is where it starts getting hard. What's the expected cell count for male students who received an A on the test? Okay, we have to start with the observed data, but we're only going to keep the totals. That's how you find your expected cell counts. So let's go ahead and break that out. Bam. So we just kept the totals. Now to find the expected cell count, for males, let's go ahead and line this up, males that got an A. So there's our row right here, A, row total 26, and column total is 323. So now we can do some math. What we have to do is multiply the row total times the column total. Whatever that product is, we're going to divide it by the grand total. So it's going to look like this, and that's going to turn into a decimal, 12.94. So that cell value would be 12.94. We're going to have to fill in them cells in a second because the last question is what's the chi-squared test statistic? For that we need to figure out from the formula what the expected cell counts are for every one. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Remember, O is the observed. That's the stuff we already know. E is expected. That's the, the numbers we have to calculate. So let's repeat that process that we did for the one cell for all cells. Bam, it's done. Now what do we do next? Let's look at the formula. Looks like we subtract the difference between the observed and expected. So there's that. What do we do next? We square that difference. That's that. Those are the numbers squared. What do we do next? We take that squared number divided by the expected cell value. And that's that. And then we add them all up. That's what that sigma means. So we're going to add all these up. And we're going to get a grand total of chi-squared of 7.65. So that's half of it degrees of freedom. We'll just use the formula. Number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. So it's 5 minus 1 times 2 minus 1. That comes out to be 4. So now we know the degrees of freedom. Here's the million dollar question here. Is there a significant difference between the boys and the girls? So we got the chi-squared. We got the degrees of freedom. We're going to have to look up the p-value in the chi-square table. And again, I just cut out a chunk here for us. So here is the four rows of freedom. Da -da 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 -da. Now let's find out where 7.65 fits in there. Looks like it falls in between these two values. So we run our fingers up, and those are the probabilities that it's between. So it's between 0.15 and 0.10. And that's a p-value that is greater than 0.05, so we're not going to reject the null. Therefore, there's no significant differences between the genders and the grading. MGZ, out.